Hello and welcome to another edition of America Unveiled. I'm Tom Hubbard, your host, and today we're in Opelika, Alabama. Why are we in Opelika, Alabama? To visit the John Emerald Distillery. Yeah, that's right, John Emerald Distillery. They're one of a very few distillers in North America now that's producing single malt uh, whiskey, similar to the Scotch whiskey that we all know and love, at least I do. But I'm very interested in uh, seeing their operation and uh, very interested in their single malt American whiskey. John Emerald Distillery has a distinction of being the first distillery in the state of Alabama to produce whiskey since prohibition. So that's interesting. So we're gonna go in, talk to the proprietor and get a little backstory see their operation and hey, maybe try a little whiskey. Just join me. Hey, we are here with Mr. Jimmy Sharp, the proprietor of John Emerald Distilling in Opelika, Alabama. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Hey, tell us a little bit about the, the history of, of uh, your distillery and uh, yeah. how it got going. Right, so um, it's called John Emerald Distilling Company after my grandfather, mm -hmm. who's John Emerald Sharp, was his full name. Uh, me and my dad started mm -hmm. the distillery together and uh, we started it uh, mainly because it's an idea we had had, just kind of kicked around for a long time. And but I traveled a lot in my old job. I had a subcontractor company and did a lot of work overseas and, and all over North America as well. And uh, so when I started having children, we said, well, you know, we've been talking about doing this forever. I need to get off the road. And it seems like it's as good a reason as any to go ahead and pull the trigger. Probably the only way I'm going to convince my wife to get on board and invest all our money into a distillery. And so you're uh, local from here, this area. I grew up in Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah. So we, we actually then we decided when we finally said okay we're going to do it. We started hunting for where we wanted to do it at, and we um, just poked around and looked at different areas and looked for buildings and you know just made the most sense. And there's a lot of gr great growth going on in this area, and we discovered down Opelika and really thought just kind of fell in love with it and thought it's, you know, the building itself was an old cotton warehouse that was. Mm -hmm. Sitting, sitting dormant. So we uh, managed to get a lease on that and built the story. Great. Yeah. Is there one particular spirit that encouraged you to get into the distilling business? Well, I got interested in whiskeys personally by studying my family history, which is Scottish, and you can't right. learn about Scotland without learning about Scotch. So right. I, uh, right. I got interested in checking out different whiskeys and whatnot. And we always joke that we our family curse, the sharp family curses, we can't dare start a hobby. Or we're going to try to wreck it by opening a business out of it. So yeah, right, right. and this is this is true true to the case. Like I got interested in scotches, and then I thought of thinking, hey, I could probably make this and figure out how to do it. And it, the idea of wanting to do it myself became more and more interesting to me. And so we start. We start with the single malt whiskey, which is a bottle we have right here. Uh, it's been obviously worked on a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. but um, that, that's actually the first legally made whiskey in Alabama since Prohibition. Mm -hmm. Which I, I'm real I proud of that. that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I, I managed to get a, a, an internship in Scotland. Did you? After, when we decided that we were going to open, I went out there for like a short, a kind of an immersion experience that one of the distilleries out there put on. Which one was that? Uh, Springbank. Oh, in Campbell whoa. Tons. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, at the time they were still... Well, the, the Campbelltown uh, Springbank, you know, they, they've they won the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards for the last three years. Well, it's beautiful whiskey. In a row, and, and, and uh, it, it's the premier distillery on earth right yeah and when, when we mean, started it was it was when i was there working with them it was uh they had this is oh my gosh 2011 I, mean, Chris, I can't believe you went to Springbank <laughs> and did your studies yeah that's where i that's where i did most of my hands-on training as far as how to how to do the process it was a great experience because the distillery is more or less a working museum i mean they they, they modernized the heat source that's about it everything else is the original equipment because it went dormant in the 70s because so they still have their malting floors they do I, yeah, yeah. yeah we did all that worked, worked all that all that with them and stuff and you got your monkey shoulder in that's right that's right yeah i got a <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it, it'll be it'll be nice if one day your your bottle of uh, John Emerald uh, American Single Malt Whiskey will be as hard to get as a bottle of Spring right, Bang. Right. I'm going to make as much as I can to help it not be hard to get, but I'll like it if it is hard to get. <laughs> yeah, did you visit any of the other, I think it's three other, to four other distilleries in, in the area? In the area, yeah. Um, um, I'm going to forget the names of them now. Because they, they Town a lot. That's a really nice blended malt. Right. And, uh, and then, right, that's also owned by the Long same. Row. Long Row. Long Row, that's also Springbank's product, which right. is a really nice, nice yeah. smoky scotch. Um, and yeah. then right next door, they have another distillery that they also own. Uh, and my gosh, goodness, the name's escaping me. Not Glen Scotia. Yeah, what, uh, but, uh, yeah, I understand. But it's Glen something. That doesn't narrow it down much in Scotland, does it? Right. <laughs> so, you sure it's not Glen Scotia? Maybe it is, and I'm just doubting myself. I, I think it is, yeah. yeah, that, that, yeah. If, if that's the right name, they own they own both those. That, that's, yeah. That was nice, too. Well, um, Impressive. Let's talk a little bit about your your whiskey itself. Then I yeah. noticed that you we're back here in your version of the Dunnage Warehouse. That's right. That's right. And you do stack three high, and uh, uh, I'm sure you do the Purvis Alba American Oak. That's right. Yep. Uh, do you do Virgin Cast? We're using Virgin Cast. When we, when we started, there wasn't a, a standard of identity for American single malt. Right. There was only right. malt whiskey, and malt whiskey required. A virgin cask. Right. The new the new standard identity does not require a virgin cask, but that's what we've always done. And we and I like the results because being a young distillery, obviously, there's we have interest in you know ways to get our product out and matured faster, mm -hmm. so we can you know because so we can the, eat because <laughs> of like the weather. You know. Yeah, and the, well, the heat helps a lot for the one. Heat, yeah. Helps helps eight repeat. Speed up, speed up the aging. New barrels help, you know, give you more maturity faster. Do, do you not find that you get that that bitterness though from from virgin oak? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, what we're we're also we're not we're doing a a, a level two char, so we're not going as heavy on the char. Mm -hmm. I think that helps with that to some extent. Um, I, I I think virgin oak is better than like third or fourth fill. Oh yeah, you know, because then it really gets you know, you know very. Why in the negative? Well, and the oak's given up most of its, well, uh, most of its nuance to the pre whatever previously lied in the ca in the cask. Right. Uh, but uh, I think new oak uh, just has the the full flavor of the oak is there to be given to the whiskey. Interesting. Um, the way you age it obviously can affect the bitterness that, that specific wood. Well, ours is all Appalachian wood, and I find that's a little it's not dramatically different than what, yeah. like Ozark and, right. and Kentucky wood, but it's a little different. Because um, I think there's like four regions in North America they pull from, sure, and like two, two in Europe, and then you got your your Japanese oak too that some people right. use. And, um, but now all the all the bourbons in the U.S. have to use the American right. oak, right? So uh, it's the that's Alba. the yeah, yeah. that corporate cell baron. Um, how long do you age your? Whiskey? Well, we're we're kind of we got that's two different things. One of we do these quarter casts over here. You see smaller barrels. And we have the traditional fifty three fifty three gallon barrels over here. Um, our quarter casts with the single malt, we're going two years. Mm -hmm. Though we don't go much longer. Sometimes, every once in a while, based on the individual barrel, we'll push it a little farther because it maybe just needs a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But with the Alabama heat and then the small barrel with the increased surface contact ratio, right. we find that that you run the risk after about two years of the oak just taking over the whiskey. Really? Because there's just so much oak being influenced, and that some of that some of that kind of tannic bitterness you can, you're talking about mm -hmm. that can over overrun the barrel. So you're probably lacking that too. What an eight to ten year maturation in a place like Scotland. I suppose, weather. sure. And if, if you if you base that on color and then and, and then typical angel share loss, which I think mm -hmm. is a, probably a better measure. If you're right. going like you know to compare rapid aging to non not to traditional aging, if I was just be personally, I prefer to to use uh, angel share as the you know, if there's a common angel share loss at this age at traditional aging in Scotland, let's say. I, you know, if I get that much angel share here, then that that's going to be the age equivalent. You know, something like that. Do you have a good uh, uh, a good percentage of angel share loss? And one of these twenty, these about twenty percent in two years. Wow. On these little 20%. barrels. Twenty percent. And that's 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 the size of the barrel because there's more airflow. You know, yeah. ratio. Well, the quarter cast always give you a, a, a nicer whiskey. 
I think, because of the surface to, well, it, to it, ratio. And you get a nice whiskey younger, I think. Yeah, and, younger. Uh, yeah. No, but there's some there's some nuance I think that can happen better in a large barrel, and those were we're going for <laughs> four, four years on this in large barrels. Is there any plans in the future maybe for sherry casking? Well, what we do currently is we, every barrel, instead of removing it from the barrel and going into a, a finished barrel, at the very beginning of each barrel, we're, we're taking uh, oak chips that have been used to age uh, muscadine wine. Ah. So just something kind of do more That's of a local, a local spin yeah. on Yeah, we want to do as very much American, local as we yeah. can to things. And even <laughs> our barley now is grown in Alabama, which is oh. rare. You know, in the Al Auburn University and, um, and Alabama A&M, along with a group called Hudson Alpha, We've been researching barley growth, mm -hmm. and right now the barley, there's two farms, one's in North Alabama, one's in South uh, Tennessee, growing the barley that we're using, then that barley is shipped to North Carolina to be malted and then back to us. So you don't have your malt? We don't malt here. here yet. That's something we aspire to do eventually, but, you know, being a startup, more, I mean, I mean, we're 10 years in now, but we still feel like a startup because we're... Right. Just well, in a heavy I mean, growth for, phase for whiskey, ten years is still virginal. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and we're we're getting there and we're growing, but it's you know it's we're growing off off, off our own cash flow too. So we don't. We, right. At this point, we've not taken on investors and that kind of thing. So we, which is nice because then we kind of you know you know answer to a board or like that. We get right. to do what we want to do, and if we feel like we need to wait on it, we can wait on it. We don't have anybody trying to bottom line it. You know, say oh you got to make we got to make the the quarter earnings or something you know to you know with a temptation to pull it young or that kind of thing so. now what are your basic core ranges that you produce core you mean uh, the core ranges and our products you mean in general mm -hmm. so we have our, our, our single malt whiskey mm -hmm. uh, that's that I, we consider that our flagship we kind of built the story around that. that's the one thing i knew i was going to make when we started mm -hmm. um, we also make some rums mm -hmm. uh, we make we make one distillation of rum out of local sugarcane uh, syrup mm -hmm. from alabama and then we make that into a silver rum, a spice rum, and an aged rum. And we age that on the used whiskey barrels, the cool. used single malt barrels. And that's, that's been kind of fun to watch. That. The rum, rum side of things is growing, um, particularly with the aged rums. I think there's more and more people that were, are bourbon and whiskey fans are starting to think about aged rums in the same light. And so there's a little more interest in that, which I'm, I'm enjoying seeing. And, and I, I'm, I'm very proud of our rum. I, it's, 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 it's won several big awards, as has our single malt for that matter. Um, that we're real proud of, and um, so we do the rums. We also do we do some vodka. We have a different line we call our Elizabeth uh, vodka, our Elizabeth spirits, and the Elizabeth spirits house contains our vodka and our. We have a th three liqueurs: a fig liqueur, a pecan liqueur, and a satsuma liqueur. What is what is your vodka distilled from? It's corn, corn, one percent corn, um, and then it's it, it actually won best vodka in the country at the 2018 American Distilling Institute competition. So we're real, 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 really proud of that. And I think you do a gin as well. We do a gin as well, yeah. um, and that's made with local juniper berries that we pick ourselves. We wild forage them. Wow. It's uh, the varietal that grows here is called juniper. It's Virginiana, mm -hmm. and to the best of our knowledge, it's the only gin in the world that uses that varietal. That, like I said, that, there's so many craft guys doing all these different random things, so we, that's what we say to the best of our knowledge. But, but it has a very unique flavor. It's almost like, I describe it as gin and absinthe had a baby, and there it is, and that's our gin. It has a little bit of an anise note to that's it. That's quite interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 it's different than usual. But, uh, but it seems like in a short 10-year period of time that, that you've developed a, 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 a quite a unique niche specific unto you. For sure, yeah. So, I'm, I mean, we do nice. We do a wide range of products. For, I mean, some of it started off as a practical purpose because mm -hmm. of, of our taste room up front, which functions like a bar during the weekends for the most part, and during the weekdays for that matter. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the Alabama law says we can only serve it if we make it. Mm -hmm. So that the revenue from that bar was a, 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 always part of our design to be able to make you know, a little more margin on it so we could fill more barrels to kind of fund the growth right. of the barrels. And uh, so. In, but we can only serve it if we make it. So to have a full bar experience, people say, well, let's make some gin. Okay, then let's make some this. And, and almost every case, we had little intention to distribute it mm -hmm. out. We were focused on the whiskey for distribution and selling outside of the distillery. But, um, you know, we were making it, and we're obviously trying to make it the best we can. We mm -hmm. you know, just you enter these competitions, and they have, uh, like, you enter five, you get a better entry fee. You know, you break on the entry fee. So we enter five products, and then it's like, you know, we had no intention to distribute vodka, and then when our vodka wins best vodka in the country, it's like, well, I guess we distribute vodka now. It's like right. So speaking of distribution, what is your range of distribution? That we, you have? We're uh, we're traditional distribution. We're in Alabama and all the states that border it. Okay. 
So that's what that five states all together, and then we um, and then we do uh, e-commerce distribution in New York and California. And just this year, we're starting to do some more like boots on the ground distribution in, in New York. So they can order online. Yeah, and well, that's yeah, because both those states have have um, laws that allow. Um, for e stores to sell to other states as well. So, with the, with the exception of a handful of states, with Alabama being one of them, right. they can sell just about every state, minus I think about eight stores or eight states. Sorry, um, but the other 42 or however many are, are available to be purchased. And we have links on our website. Yeah. That kind of thing. I mean, are you looking, you know, at the future? Obviously, maybe expanding into Europe and the rest of the we, global market. We are. We're, we're about. To, we're we're waiting. On, we're expecting our first PO this week for our first order to Puerto Rico. So that'll be. We've kind of found a, an interesting little connection there. So we're going to start selling a few of our brands in Puerto Rico. If you could get into Germany, now a lot. You know, get into Germany, then Germany that. I'm sure you're familiar with whiskey.com, those people, mm -hmm. they distribute all over. All over the world. You know, yeah. I have not uh, gotten in legally set up in Europe or anything yet. It's definitely on the short list to, to, to look into Europe. And, um, but it's, but as we're also trying to grow where we are too. It's like, we've also got to talk, we're at the same, while, we're, while all that's happening, we're also, look, we've got two new, we got a new rye whiskey. We've got two new bourbon recipes that, are, that haven't come out of the barrel yet, which we're very excited about. Um, but it's. Do you have a straight rye? Well, it will be when it's it, when it's it'll be a, at least a straight. We're, we're debating on the rye. We have one bourbon recipe we're, we're holding as a bottled and bond release, and we're okay. about two years out on that. That was, going, that was my next question. I was going to ask you. You're going to do the bottled and bond rye, similar to like Rittenhouse or well, and that's what we we're, or... we may we're, we're, we're considering is taking this rye recipe, which so far all we've it's 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 only about a year. The rye is only about a year into the barrel, at this point, the first batches. But based off the white dog from the rye, it came out really, really pretty. It's a, it's a two thirds rye, one third barley, mm -hmm. no, no corn in it, in it. So it's a, so we wanted to differentiate a little bit. Yeah, but that'd be quite interesting. It, rye and barley. Yeah, it, it, a lot of people do the rye and corn. Rye and corn, know, right? So and it's it, it, really I'll, make a bourbon out of it. You know? Yeah, that's right. It's just a bourbon with the rye being prominent yeah. over the whole thing. So we want to do something a little different. I, and I so far, I mean what. I and mean, that's what all I got to go on at the beginning is to make a really good white dog and be like, hope this comes out, you know, yeah. hope it comes out good. Yeah. And But so far, so good. We're really excited about it. And then we've got a high rye bourbon, more of a traditional, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, um, sorry, corn, wheat, barley recipe. Um, and then we got a, and then we've got a weeded bourbon that's going to be, that's already been committed to be reserved for a bottled and bond release. What? The high rye, we you know, the high rye and the rye are going to be, we're going to wait and see kind of thing. Well, you know, a lot of, uh, um, Scotch enthusiast, if they drink American whiskey, they tend to have a preference toward rye for some reason. And, I think that, and, yeah, that makes and, sense. And myself, I'm, I'm the same way. If I drink an American whiskey, uh, you know, I haven't tried this yet, <laughs> but if I drink an American whiskey, um, I tend to go for a rye. Sure. And uh, But I, I'm, I'm quite uh, interested uh, in, in all you guys that are doing the American uh, single malts now. Well, it's fun. We always joke around and say it's 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 fun time to be making single American single malt because it's you know it's it's real whiskey now because the government says so. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it's long past due. Yeah. And there's just so many bourbons out there, and it, it, it's just it, it's almost overwhelming. And uh, to do something like this is new, refreshing, very commendable. And I wish you the greatest of luck with it. Well, and in saying that, can we uh, have a look around your your operation? Of course, yeah. Let's let's, let's go poke around a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so this is um, some of the stuff we're doing. All of our grains are coming from Alabama. This is some. Um, it's called bloody butcher corn. It's kind of got these red red and black kernel corns. We have this grown for us here in Lee County. So that's going to be that's what we're holding for the for the bottled and bond um, weeded bourbon. So that's getting combined with local wheat. And then this is some of our rye right here for the weeded for the high rye. We do a true double distillation, which is similar to what we did in Scotland. Where this, so this is a stripping still. So we do our which is you can think of as a pre-distillation where we run it through the first time, um, and we create we collect in a tank like this our low wines, which are basically spirit. It's like in between being the final spirit and the and the and the wash from the fermentation. So. But that gets us kind of pre-distilling it into low wines makes it for, and easier to make the cuts more efficiently in the final spirit run on the on the back end. 
But that's what we run off of here, of the spirit still. And then we come around this way to our, I mean, I'm sorry, I said spirit still, stripping still. We, after we do the low lines on the, on the stripping run, we put it transferred over here. And we run it through, this is a hybrid pot still. So compared to like what we trained in Scotland where you have to use true pot stills. In the US, we can use a, we can use a little bit of column, which will further enhance our ability to refine the spirit in a single pass. So you could, a lot of debate about it, you know, like the, the column, which is these, these four chambers right there. So those four chambers in that reflux column is what makes it a hybrid pot still. But the debate about whether each one of those chambers could be regarded as its own um, individual distillation. And in, in a certain respect it is, and then in a certain respect it's not. But but uh, regardless, it helps helps to separate those head, what we call heads, hearts, and tails. So that'll help us break those heads out a lot more efficiently and get them removed from the product to get a cleaner, more refined white dog at the end, by the end of it. So do you feel like you get enough um, um, liquid to copper uh, exposure? Yeah, so the, you got the swan neck copper there, that everything's going through the through the column, which is all copper. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as long, as long as it's making contact with copper, we can, I mean, the whole point, of the, or the main reason to have copper is for the, it's called a dimethyl sulfite. Mm -hmm. So and it doesn't take a whole lot of contact to get there. And everything inside that chamber is also, like the floors are all column, or copper, sorry. So that, um, you know, gives it plenty of contact with the copper. Mm -hmm. Get that done. And then it makes it over to the final condenser and comes out there and we collect it get rid of our heads and collect our hearts and then separate that from the tails and we're off to the races then before over here we got our mash this is our mash tun right here and then we mash and then ferment over in these these vessels over here I think right now we've got two of our high rye bourbon re re recipes fermenting and one rum going at the moment so and that rum we make with cane syrup so it doesn't we don't have to mash you know that's the whole point of mashing is of course to convert starch to sugar in the mash so in, in the, from the grains but sugar cane is already already sugar so it goes right to the fermenter and off to the races well i notice i mean primarily you have a you use stainless steel uh, mm -hmm. uh rather than you know all copper and then like the mash done you know with the wood and sure sure and, uh, all of that. So, uh, do you see a difference, uh, a great difference in, well, in the end result? The copper is critical for the, in, in, for, from, to, from, for the final spirit run. Right. And of course, we feel like we have the right, appropriate amount of copper where it needs to be uh -huh. to uh, complete the final run correctly. Uh, as far as stainless on the mash and all that, I think that, uh, you know, like what we trained in Springbank, that was all steel uh -huh. mashes and whatnot. Yeah. Um, they did have the big wood fermenters. We, we just don't, you know, they're not heavily available, nor are they, um, are they uh, affordable. <laughs> but but uh, fermentation, I mean, it's, it's, the way we come at equipment is, you know, any, you could be, you can make really good spirits on poor equipment if you know how to use the equipment right, and you can make really bad spirits on great equipment if you don't yes, know how to use the equipment right. And I think that's sort of the, just to know what we have and what, advantages and limitations it has and then use them appropriately so on your on your your malt whiskey how long do you do your fermentation fermentations last about a week a week um, uh, anywhere from five five to seven days it depends on the, uh, it's a little faster in the summer so you don't have you know some people do the 60 hours some do the you know the, right 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 yeah. we we're it's what we're, we're looking for is a specific um, we're, we're just tracking the, the gravity mm -hmm. and so once we've gotten down to a certain gravity Assuming everything else has gone appropriately, I mean, if something gets infected, then that's obviously like it's dumped. But right. uh, one thing we've noticed, which is kind of interesting, is as we've been distilling, fermenting in this building, mm -hmm. uh, we can go, we get, we're able to go longer and, and longer and colder fermentations without it infecting. Right. Um, and the only explanation for for that being the case is the fact that the more we ferment in here and we're pitching yeast that the, the yeast, the favorable yeast is propagating the building. And so, which would imply that eventually it'd probably take a hundred years, but you could, we could stop pitching yeast at all and all the, just the wild yeast would come in there. But we've already seen it in, in 10 years, we've seen a distinct improvement in the, just the, it's like we're forcing the environment to be favorable to our fermentations, I guess that's right. the way to say it. I guess. Right. And you bottle here yourself. Correct? We do, we're bottling a little bit. We're bottling some vodka right now. 
I don't think they're doing the unplugged. Now, here's a question everybody's going to want to know. Okay. All right. How do you filter your whiskey? Okay, yeah. So we run, <laughs> we call, we don't chill filter. Good. Um, and we run it through, we initially run it through just a very loose filtration to get like chunks and heavy, yeah. heavy bits out, just throughout the screen kind of mm -hmm. thing. And then we run it through uh, diametitious earth, mm -hmm. which is just a, which is a, a filter that will pull the, I'm going to say this right, the long chain fatty acids mm -hmm. out from that the woods can impose. Which has a benign, maybe some would argue a positive effect on the flavor, but usually a benign effect on the flavor. Mm -hmm. Just pulls that and prevents chill haze from happening down the road when we get it. You know, so it hits out in the market. It's not gonna. You know, you see, ever seen those little torn pieces of tissue paper floating around in a whiskey bo bottle? It's just the, just the lipids that didn't get filtered out. But, well, I mean, but, I, I, I like cask. Sure. Myself, right. Know. Um, too, but I mean, you know, we just do that diametitious yeah. earth. It's just a, it's just a, a purely. Well, it's good to know you don't chill filter. No chill filter. What about E one fifty caramel coloring? Do nope. No color? coloring. No, no coloring. Well, you probably wouldn't need to with virgin. No, cask, no, it puts know? a lot of color in the yeah. whiskey. Um, so we get a lot of darkness off that. Off that so, cask. gentlemen and ladies, non chill filtered, non colored, American single malt. <laughs> so. This is wonderful. There's just something extremely satisfying on a base level. <laughs> so you can see our operation is pretty hand, pretty hands-on. It's not. Uh, so we're we're just we're, the, this particular whiskey or this this vodka has already been filtered and ready to go, and it's just hooked up to a reservoir. And they're doing a, a round of minis. We've got some folks every now and again wanting to get uh, we get a lot of minis minis for weddings. So we've got a, this is a wedding. A order for a wedding group that wanted many vodkas and many bourbons so they wanted to, I guess that's the bride and the groom the vodka and the bourbon but So we're here with a display in front of you. So I brought, yeah, I brought a few a few bottles out here. So we got our single malt whiskey that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the single malt whiskey at cask strength. So that's an 86 proof. That's 116 proof. I didn't know you did a cask. Strength. We do. Uh, we we used to do it exclusively for um, you know somebody did a barrel pick, like a package store or something did a barrel pick. But we started to offer it at least here at the distillery. We've offered it um, kind of kept it re regularly. So, and that's it. What ABV? Hundred. Well, uh, ABV. Why, why can't I do math? Uh, 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 Fifty-eight. Wow. That I'm then, looking forward to. That. Yeah. Then. And then that's our, our our beer back series, and that's the thing we do kind of intermittently throughout the years, where we, we get with the diff different breweries, mm -hmm. and they take our beer barrels, age beer in it, then we get the barrel back and we put the whiskey back in the barrel and age it post beer for about six months or so. 
And wow. Then, so this particular bottle we did with... Um, so that gives a, a whole different profile. It just adds it. a new, yeah, and it's kind of, that's kind of just a fun, a fun collaboration to do with the different, mm -hmm. different breweries and whatnot. This particular one we did with uh, Goat Island Brewing. Mm -hmm. They aged a winter warmer in the in the barrel, and then um, and then we finished it finished finished our whiskey with the barrel after the beer. Right. So, and then your your standard. And then our, our yeah. The, <coughs> the stand. You want to start with that? Well, uh, yeah. The hmm? standard. Yeah. I think the cast strength should be last. That that seems fair. <laughs> Just a wee dram. I'll taste them on with you. So again, this is 100% malted barley. We do smoke a little. We smoke 20% of the batch, but with peach and pecan wood. Yeah, I I read that. I I think that's quite unique and quite American right. that you would do that. You know, as opposed to using peat or something. Yeah, that we don't we don't have here. So we want to have. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we do, we wanted to have. We wanted to have as much kind of terroir for this area as we can. Um, well, there's a little. There is a fruit note on that, like a, um, you, you, there is a hint of smoke coming through on the, on the, uh, the nose. What I, what I find interesting is I think that the, the smoke we use, because half of the smoke is pecan, or peach wood, that that actually imparts a little, the smoke gives a little, it's, it's like a, a little fruit. Yes, it's, 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 it's a, a sweet, sweet it's a sweet smoke. Right. Uh, which is which, which peat is could odd. be, yeah. Peat could be aggressive, you know. What I mean? Which I mean, I, enjoy, I love a peated scotch, real, but uh, yeah, it can be aggressive. It can be very medicinal, right? Uh, but that, that's that's it's lot, almost like a barbecue smoke, mm -hmm. you know. That's interesting, and the malt is there. You can definitely smell the malt, and some fruity note too. Like yeah, a, I always describe it as like a stewed apple. I can see that. Okay. Yeah, like a stewed apple. You get kind of a general dried fruit kind of. Wow. The the smoke really hits you on the palate. I mean, you you get it but not strong on the nose, but on the arrival, it really just comes up and says, I'm here. <laughs> and, and it's that sweet, like you said, pecan -y type barbecue smoke, which, which you don't taste in malt whiskeys, you know? That's, that's quite nice, it's interesting. So what, what made you decide to um, to use the, the pecan and what was the other? Peach. Peach. Oh, well, I, you know, just because it's regional, I suppose. That was the main reason, main uh, goal, or that's what led us to the first place. We did a lot of tests where we we took White Dog and just ate, put the, the um, prior to smoking it, we soaked it in the chips of mm -hmm. the wood. Because we were, we're smoking uh, chipped wood. Yeah. So we're smoking with. Um, and that gave us some, you know, some kind of almost like making tea out of it in a way. You know, that gave us some some ideas of what the wood's going to impart to the to the to the whiskey. And we're not and we're not smoking the whiskey itself. We're smoking the grain prior to mashing. Right. It's a cold smoke process. Yeah, a lot of people might not have known that. Yeah, because you, yeah, after the malting, that's how you dry the the grain. You know? Right. So, just for you people who might not have known that. There's a fun thing I learned when I was in Scotland too. Working was that they when they when they cut the peat out of the bogs mm -hmm. into, the, into the bricks, they stack them in like kind of like this up, mm -hmm. and they call those reeks. Right. And I am a hundred thousand percent confident that the word oh that oh that reeks you know it that reeks because yeah. those stacks and when you start shoveling that stuff into the into the kilns, it you reek when you're done. <laughs> like oh, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that that word slang of saying something reeks comes, comes from, from the fact that, that those stacks are called reeks because yeah and, and they're, they're, they're strong smelling and the different type peats give different type you know because sure. you got the, like the peat moss you got right. the, the bricks of peat which is more the the you know meter from meter underground basically right. Right. your harvest and uh, uh but this is this is quite quite interesting and unusual and that's the whole point of having 
Like, yeah, you know, you wanna, yeah you wanna, we don't want to be, with everything we make, whether it be whiskey or gin or rums, our goal is not to be a really good version that's just like something else. You know, we want to be, there's no end game there. You, know, you want to have your own unique product. I'll put that in. Yes, and this one is the This is the, the beer, beer back. back. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know it's a, a lot of, a lot of distilleries have done something similar where they did a collaboration where they finish aged with other products that sort of thing. But on on the finish on your first one, I get, I get sort of um uh like a candied cherry mm -hmm. on, on the back. I can see that for and, sure, almost yeah. like a maraschino type, maraschino type, type finish, yeah, right? Yeah. It leaves it leaves a nice sweet sweeter note, I think. It but it it has a nice finish. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this will be fun to see the, you know, the, how they, because it's the same whiskey, it's the, or same, maybe not the same exact barrel, but certainly. Now the, now the smoke is a bit muted on, mm -hmm. on the beer back one compared to your original. Yeah, I get a lot more like, on, like fruity smell on the smell yeah. for me but than on this one. The smoke is still there, but it's muted and I get Like a hint toward a vanilla, but not a vanilla. You know, almost like a like a cocoa powder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And it produces, you know, legs, and they don't, they don't just slide down the glass. I mean, they kind of roll down. So, it's not a heavily oily whiskey, but it's got a decent amount of oils in it. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, it's got. I mean, it's got. Like I said, it's got some legs. It, 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 uh... I was, as soon as I tasted that, I got a note that I hadn't thought of before. I tasted like I almost got like a hit, hit of root beer. Believe it or not, that one's completely different. Yeah, the beer tastes completely different. The beer to affects me, it a lot. It's a that sarsaparilla hit. Right, that's I guess the root beer. Yeah, that, I mean that, whew, that sarsaparilla. Um, Again, like I, like I said, it's vanilla, not vanilla, but when on the palate, it's like sarsaparilla and cream soda. See that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the fun thing about the beer backs too, is there's like, you know, while the beer backs, they share some similarities according to which brewery we work with, because the breweries are deciding what beer to put in there. So that's, that's a little bit of a bespoke you're, approach you're, each round. We your do. original one, I think, is, is a little bit more refined and this is, this is more like, hey, I'm here. Right. You know. The, the original I've had, I mean, we always get, you get toast tasting notes from competitions it's entered. It's got seven international medals under its belt now, so we're real proud of that. Seven? Seven different, yeah, different, wow. over the years we've entered it and, and medaled at different levels from gold to bronze, but um, more recently it's been, it's been all gold. So we're well, I mean, this is my first time trying it, everyone, and, you know, this is quite, quite enjoyable, actually. And right in the back door, <laughs> you know. Down the street, really. I'm going to pour this next one, but I'm not trying to rush it. Take your time. There we go. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that sarsaparilla is very, very much there. Sarsaparilla, cream soda, like... And you, and you get a, a slight, almost like the way f fermented grapes smell, mm. you know, on the finish. And you get like a, a, a nice fermentation. I do. Nice, yeah. yeah. It's always fun to hear everybody's, you know, because yeah. everybody's going to pick up a little something or just describe it. But the finish is longer on the beer back than it is on 
Well, yeah. and it also spent a little, at, at least about a, another six months longer, six to seven months longer on the barrel, so considering it's second. So the beer back is like two and a half years? That's right. So we take the, we, we finished the whiskey, com, well, 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 compared to the the standard, excuse me, whiskey, we, the, the full two years, if not a little bit more. And then that whiskey just gets held in a drum and while the beer, beer's aging out. And then we, uh, once the beer's got done and we get the barrels back, then the whiskey goes back. That same whiskey that was in that barrel goes back in that barrel. Right. Now, the cast the cast strength. strength. There we go. I'm looking forward to this. Now the cast strength is aged this aged the same. The same. It, it is really the only difference in the, <coughs> this the standard and the cast strength is the the proof at which it's we, you know we just leave in this. The barrels are usually coming out at about one sixteen point uh, point something. We just bottle we we proof so, them down to one sixteen just for uniformity in our labeling. So they, they, it's around seventy percent ABV cast strength. I mean. Well, 60. So that'd be 140. Yeah, 60, I mean, yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 60. And and then you <clears throat> lose it down to make it 40. 50, 58, so. So your, your regular is 40 ABV? It's 43. 43, mm -hmm. perfect, yeah. Okay, let's nose this. Cast strength, John Emerald. You can definitely tell the consistency of the, of, of the nose, e even though they're three different expressions. Mm -hmm. Now this one, I'm getting a, a waft of the smoke, but I'm also getting like a figgy, fig note. I can see it. I, can see, I, I mean, I, I, to yeah. me, like a dried fruit. Mm -hmm. being, that's like a fig note. Interesting nose. Taste. Hmm. Wow. That's robust. That's 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 figs. Dates, raisins, clove, you know, I get clove in there. Um, I mean, the, 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 the nose is almost, has no relationship to the palate on this one. So do you, a, do you a, find a, that? I can see what you, yeah, I can understand what you're saying. Because you, you go in, journey from one of the I mean, you go in, you go in anticipating something right. on the nose and then and it gives you the something. palate. And, and you know, strangely enough, you know, like the Scottish whiskey is like Ardbeg, Lafroy, Lagavulin. Mm -hmm. They give you that medicinal note. Sure. This has a medicinal note, but it's a completely different medicinal note than those, those are more iodine and, and right. stuff. This is, this is, it's, 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 I mean, it's just medicinal. Do you see that? I mean, there am I off on that? No, I mean, I get what you're no, saying. I, no, out of all of them, those that, it, it tastes like you you walking into a hospital surgery or 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 like or not an apothecary or anything like that. Sure, but it's it's it's, it's quite a medicinal, which is very pleasant to me. I love that, um, but it's like a non iodined medicinal. It's almost like chlorhexidine or something. Right. So instead of the band aid, it's the it's the uh, yeah the it's, medicine itself or something. Or, yeah, or like the chlorhexidine or right. something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Now, I, I would enjoy seeing how water added to this would expand it. We could, we could do that. Do you have a dropper or something just, for, for water? Let me grab a dropper. All right. So, so if you don't mind, I want to add just a little bit. Absolutely, water. yeah. Please. Uh, oh, I got the cap on there. Oh, right. Yeah. Here we go. 
I'll add just a little bit more. That's one problem. You got to keep the. You got to. Yeah. Being in the south, you got to fight those fruit flies. One, two, three. <laughs> I'll do the same. I'll do it along with. Well, with it being oily as it is, I mean, obviously the water will, will open up. Uh, should open it up a little bit. And being cast strength as well. Actually, the water, adding the water brought out a lot of smoke in the nose. Oh, definitely, yeah, it sure did. It really brought out the smoke in the nose. Absolutely. medicinal note is enhanced and you're getting almost more toward the iodine aspect of it the the dates the figs the raisins the the Marcino's cherries the I mean it's a it's a strong uh, you know a strong attack on the palate which is, is lovely and the arrival I, li I like the arrival is nice and slow and it builds up and the finish is just lingering it's, it's got the longest finish of all of you. Sure. You know. I mean, it's just... That's lovely. Thank you. you you're, I think you're doing a wonderful job. Not that you need me to tell you, but I mean, you, well, know, you know your product. and never, I, never feels bad to hear it. <laughs> I think, you know, I think, I think with exposure to more markets and bigger markets, uh, I think a lot of people uh, would be interested in uh, trying these products. And for those of you out there who are looking for the Lachakes or things like that, spring banks that you can't get, you can't get, it's very hard. And if you find them, a lot of times you can't afford it. But if you're looking for something like that, give this a try, because this is accessible. A lot of the, the, the higher end Scotch whiskeys aren't. This is in the same profile, the same direction as the Scottish whiskey that we all know and we all love. American single malt whiskey. Do not discount it. I know a lot of you out there have been discounting it. It's, it's, it's not worth discounting. This is integrity stuff that's been integrity bottled. Cast strength, non-chill filtered, <laughs> no coloring added and in time I have no doubt he'll have an age statement we will absolutely <laughs> and but, once you achieve that well that's one of the main things reasons we separated the um, we started filling we were moving from the quarter cast to the 53 so that's one of the drawbacks of the quarter cast is you really especially here in the heat of Alabama you can't go more than about two and two and a half. But you know, you with could, your, but you wouldn't want to. With your profile, just hypothesizing, were it to be uh, matured in X, say, Oloroso, Oloroso sherry cask, mm -hmm. or X port cask, wow, I think you would have a whole different. Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I think, and I, I think this, this profile that, that you got Maybe maybe that's something that you toss around one day and considering. You know, it'd be fun to do a lot. Yeah, lots of, be a whole variety of different. But I mean, by having stuff. three expressions uh, of a single malt whiskey, at being ten years in, I, I think it's quite impressive. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean so, you know, and to some extent, these two expressions are from the same. Yeah. You know, the same. I guess grouping, you know, they're from the same whiskeys, whether now, they're proof differently, but. Now, I didn't mean to ask you, the water that you use. Mm -hmm. We're using a reverse osmosis filtration, filtrated water okay. that we then remineralize. So we're kind of creating our own water profile okay. to some extent. So we're, we're remineral, min, remineralizing it with the. Uh, because unfortunately here in Opelika, Alabama, you don't have access to, to spring stone, water right. and limestone. Everything surface water. Or here, even so. well water, really, because it's... Well, we have um, a farm. One of the farmers that grow our, uh, some of our corns that we're getting here for those new bourbons we are looking at earlier, um, they, their neighboring farm has a, has a, 
a well which we've been te testing that water for, for proofing with. And so we're considering uh, starting to collect that water and bring it over here in tanks and use that water for the proofing and stuff. Wow. Um, nice. Just, to, just to, you know, to kind of get back to as much local as possible. But we got to find them. We got to have, it's got to be the right, you know, we're waiting to get the proper test done to get the right water source. So it's not just any old water. Right. But right now we're taking locals because they'll like a surface water. So the water changes throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We run it through reverse sauce. Basically we strip it mm -hmm. by RO filtering it and then we can rebuild it to the profile yeah. we want. Mineralize it with like that's right. micro trace yeah. minerals. That's right, that's right. Um, so is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you'd like uh, everyone to know? Well, just that, you know, we're, we're, we're plugging away. We're laying lots of barrels down. Uh, our, our products are out in the market. Uh, they're not as available as, as we'd like them to be. You know, but that, that's, that's a moving target all the time. It's, mm -hmm. that's a, being a small brand, that's a, it's always a challenge to kind of, you know, you have the quarter going, I'm over here, I'm over here. I kind of think, you know, sort of that it feels like sometimes, but, but uh, we're increasingly getting a little more exposure out in the world and, and things are available. Our website's always got links of where it can be found. And, that kind of thing. That, that's and, kind of and your website is? JohnEmeralddistilling.com. JohnEmeralddistilling.com. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, go to JohnEmeralddistillery.com. Read the history he's got on there. I'm sure if he's accessible for any questions oh, that you may have. Uh, and I urge you to, to really, seriously, uh, try uh, some of his whiskey. Uh, he's got three expressions here, like he said, two of the same, you know, virtually the same, but he's got three dis distinct impressions, in my opinion. And he has all these other spirits that we haven't gone into today, but hey, we're a whiskey type channel, so. Um, and I'm sure those of you out there who like other quality spirits should check him out come by here i'm sure he uh, would be happy to, to to chat with you and until next time thank you very much for tuning in and uh